Now the reason you'd want to post tension GFRC is for long spans. If this is a 10 foot piece, everyone would say, well you can't do that with GFRC, especially in a thinner section. You can if you apply tension to the bottom in the form of a rod. That way the bottom is in tension. A crack wants to start the tension bar won't allow the crack to go up through. If you don't use that, you could say, well, my piece can span five feet. Well, it may span five feet, but it may eventually creep. They call it long-term creep. It'll take the shape of the span. It'll sag. With post-tensioning, if you put a little bar in the bottom, the bar is under tension, the top is under compression, where it belongs, and you can actually, uh, you can make a 10 foot span fairly easily. The piece we're going to make today, we're going to make a little short six footer and we're going to load the hell out of it to failure once it cures, just to show you what you can do. Now I come from, uh, what I've done most of my life is I've worked in precast, pre-stress, which means we pull cables all the time, and to a lesser extent post-tension. So that's how you use a span. Now the other condition you use post tension rods is in a cantilever. If this piece was suspended here and here, and you have, let's say, a four foot cantilever, you could use rods to hold your cantilever up. The rods would start low, the bottom of the cantilever, it would come up like this, towards the surface, and then it will run flat like that. This is hard to do in three quarters. Today we're going to make our piece three inches thick, but you won't see the rod. But if you could take your rod, as you're tensioning the rod with the anchorage back here somewhere, you'll actually see the end of your countertop. You can bend it upward, or you can bend it downward. You can bend concrete with rods in it. It's very easy to do. But that way you could get a four foot cantilever, no piece of cake, as long as this was long enough to counteract it. Now this is better than steel because steel, if you use just plain steel, you generally get a crack and you get a visible crack. This way you're counteracting the crack by putting tension on the piece already. I did it when I made a uh, one instant practical experience. I had to make a sink. It was an apron front sink that sat, I think it was eight feet long. The sink was in here. This was actually, oh, it might have been 10 inches deep. What I did is, and it was only supported on the ends. What I did is I ran two half inch rods, one on either side of the sink, and I cranked those babies and post tension. And when I did it, you could actually see it bend upward, so I backed off a little. So now we had an eight foot piece, it was a clear span. with a sink in the middle. And no visible means of support underneath. This is a threaded rod. There's different types of threaded rod, obviously, in different diameters. This is a 3 8 rod. This is a grade 30 steel. You can use half inch rod, grade 60, which is twice, twice as strong. To give you this perspective, when I did pre-stress and post-tension work, we would use a cable the yield on them was 270,000 PSI. Now these are 30, which will be enough on our piece. It has to be free to slide within the piece. What I did is I bought some uh, PEX tubing. So you slide it within the PEX tubing. You pre-attach washers, nut, You want to make sure you leave a little bit past the nut because when we go to post tension we're actually going to grab this with a piece of vice grips, turn this, or else the entire rod will try to twist. Then the next part is you make a little block out and put this block out on. So when you strip, here's your pendant that's going to go in the piece. We'll strip this block out, grab the end, tension it, that'll give our piece tension. As far as anchorage, the anchorage go, 
These couple washers are probably sufficient for this 3 8 rod. But you can make custom anchorages. You would take a piece of plate, drill a hole in it, whatever you need it, so that a half inch rod would support the, support the weight better, or a cantilever. This one here, we're going to make a hollow, three inch thick foam cord piece, post tension it, and then see how much it takes to break it, just to give you an idea how to do it. Here's the sample, I would call it a composite beam we're going to pour. It's three inches deep. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to pour a half inch of self-consolidating GFRC on the bottom. We're going to put two inches of foam in on top of that. Then we're going to place our tendons on either side of the foam. The tendon will come right to the top like that so we can access this little box to tighten it. We'll make sure we get material in the center because you don't want this to sag. If anything, you want this to be closer to the top. So we'll pour a half, put, a little, put the foam in, put a little more in, put our tendon in either side just so that our box is in just a little bit so the edge you won't see it either. That way you hide these boxes. When we strip it, the only place this box will show is a little hole here. We'll have access to be able to tighten that hole. We're using a mix. Based on current that issues, with a 3% fiber loop, and it's obviously an SCC mix. Now, the advantage you'll get using Trinix admixtures is much higher. Of doing is I'm waiting for the bottom to kick just a little bit so I don't want to float my phone. And we want to have our tendon located properly too. We don't want that to sink. Now what you want to do with your tendon is make sure it's located properly. CSA blend. It's been uh, less than an hour since we poured it. It's already too hard to travel. It's reasonably flat. What I like to do, especially with the CSA blend, mix it with some water, get some plastic on it. Hold that moisture in. I'm going to throw an uh, electric blanket on top. I'm not going to plug it in because I don't need to. Memorial Day weekend coming up and we will strip this next week and uh, tension our rods and load it and see what happens. Here's the pocket with the uh, tendon exposed. I just dug the styrofoam out. Here's another pocket that we have to dig out. Take a screwdriver, get enough of the foam out so you can get to the tendon. 
Now I put pockets on both ends of this particular piece. You only really need a pocket on one end. The reason I put pockets on both ends on this one is I want to see when we push this piece to failure, I want to see where it fails. My guess is that since these are grade 30 pieces of steel, that uh, the threads will probably strip, but we'll see what happens. Either it's going to fail in shear and the piece will have a shear layer, or the uh, threads will strip, it'll pull out. The rod probably will not break, so it would take a heck of a lot to break the rod. We'll see what happens. We'll uh, tension them a little bit before we strip, and then we'll set it over there and start uh, pushing it to failure. Now to tension it, you just use a wrench, but as you can see, you need a way to hold the rod. What will happen is, if I start to go like this, it'll twist that rod and it'll bounce back. The solution is, you hold on to that while you tension it. How much tension you put on? You can do the calculation if you want to, but my answer is until it's pretty tight. You can actually see it bend the piece. We're not going to bend this piece. We'll just snug them up. There, I just felt the piece. The piece actually lifted off the form a little bit. So we're close to enough. I'm going to go one more. Now she's pretty tight. Just watch your rod. You see the way my rod is turning? Hold the rod. Tension the piece. You don't want to strip your thread out, obviously. And a grade 60 bar will hold a lot more than a grade 30. What's happening is as I'm tightening the bottom, the top is one, going to want to crown up a little and come off the form a little. A tiny bit of crown is actually a good thing. I'd say that one's tight enough. Now over to the next one. This piece is 6 feet by 18 inches, so 9 square feet. Just by me cranking it that little bit, I gave it a little bit of a crown, not much. But a little, probably about, well, I would say, 3 eighths of an inch of crown. Now as we load it, that crown's probably going to disappear and we'll find out how it fails. I'm not really sure how this piece is going to fail, but we'll keep piling bags on and see what happens. Every bag we put on equals about 11 pounds a square foot of load. Okay, let me start loading and see what happens. Start with one wheel, and then go around on either side of it, and then just keep going up. That's nine, that's uh, right about a hundred pounds a square foot. A hundred pounds a square foot would be people loading, like in a hallway or something like that, and it's still not showing any signs of deflection. Fifteen, so that's Sixty-five pounds a square foot. Okay, we're at 231 pounds a square foot of load on this little beam. It's only got a half inch of concrete there, half inch there. So we have 2,100 pounds. 2,100 pounds. Nine square feet. Divided by nine. Okay. We are at 233 pounds per square foot loading on that. And I'm still maintaining that probably an eighth inch of camera that we started. We're going to keep loading it and see what the hell happens. Oh, 
We're up to 255 pounds of square foot loading on the slab. Granted, it's only a six foot span, but the 10 foot would be a piece of cake. We're up to 288 pounds of square foot loading. So now we're at 311 pounds of square foot on our six foot span. 29. That's uh, 3,000 pounds. 333 pounds of square foot. I'll tell you the truth. But I already put the forklift on top of it. Yeah. 3,200 pounds. Uh, just keep going. What the hell? <laughs> Watch out. 366 pounds per square foot loading on that piece. 3,400 pounds. 3,400 pounds. And it's it's not even starting to deflect yet. The reason for that is because it's so tension. And we use Trinix admixture. I invented it, so I'm a believer in it, but this kind of goes beyond what anyone would ever need to support. You could do probably, I would do a 10 foot span, 20 foot span, maybe a little bit deeper. As long as you can post tension it, I thought the anchor would be So we're at 3,300. Right? I think uh, we might have to call the test. We can't get it to fail. What we'll do is we'll restack it on the pallet, and we'll take the full pallet, set it on there, and then we'll take this full pallet, set it on there, on top of that one. Or else we, we can't get it to fail. We're at, how much are we at now? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. 3,500. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, home in on that crack right there. Okay. We finally got a crack to the belt. Here's what happened. You can see a crack started to open up. So the failure here is of the rod. We're not sure how the rod failed, but the rod is actually the failure. The concrete, the top is not. Sometimes it'll fail in shear, but this was a rod failure. It's still not all the way down, but we're going to back off this test and that's going to be it. We can't get it to hit the ground. As you can see, he's got to hold it. Now, once the crack opened like that, it's like a rubber band. What I'd like to do next is find out where it failed. I'm guessing that the thread strip, but the only way to know is we're going to flip it over and look at it. It's a result of our bars. The bars we used are grade 30. So they actually stretched it up to allow a crack to open. You can see they're loose now. I actually, so what failed is we actually stretched our bars. The concrete didn't fail. Cut. 